I'm here today with Jack Lifton. He's the found, founding principal for Technology Metals Research, and he's recently become a columnist, of course, for Investor Intel. How are you today, Jack? I'm fine. Thank you. Jack, last week you did a five-piece series on the future forecast of rare earths on Investor Intel, which had significant viewership. However, there was one small mistranslation, in my humble perspective, with Dudley Kingsnorth's uh, forecast and your commentary on this. Would you like to clarify for our audience? Yeah, um, I, in, in reading the comments, I, I got I. I understood that that uh, the audience, perhaps, and Dudley for certain, uh, misunderstood uh, what I what I was Im implying. I I was uh, saying that Dudley's for taking Dudley's forecast, which are fine. Uh, they he said they are conditioned upon certain events happening, certain events that would drive new demand or additional demand in the earth industry. I agree with that certainly, and based. Uh, if those things that Dudley said needed to happen for his forecast to be accurate did happen, you would in fact get get that those numbers. Okay. Well, what what my experience uh, and my analysis of some of those conditions was that they probably will not happen. So I'm certain that Dudley would agree with me 100 percent that if if a, if a driver does not occur there will be nothing driven <laughs> so so that the you know i i'm actually using his forecast which is intriguing to me why and i'm not criticizing dudley at all i'm criticizing uh, some of the readers uh, um uh, sorry about that but some the, the readers need to take more time to think about what they're reading and not and not react emotionally but intellectually that's that's the difference all right i certainly never mean any disrespect for dudley i like dudley and Dudley has been doing this longer than I have. At least he's been in the actual active rare earth industry longer than I have. I, I, since I'm older than Dudley by a considerable number of years, I'm, I'm going to guess that I've been studying rare earths longer than he has. But he certainly, as far as I'm concerned, the expert. And I was using his work as a basis for some commentary. I thought that I was actually uh, respecting him and uh, so, uh, I, if Dudley's uh, listening, I, I certainly apologize for any misunderstanding. And to the readers, I, I suggest uh, that you understand my perspective, which is cold logic. Given something is true, is something else true. This is this is uh, schoolbook logic. And, and uh, in the rare space, there's is so much has so much um, of hype and pump, it, it's very difficult sometimes to, to see the forest for the trees. So that's what, that's what I'm trying to do here. Uh, uh, I, I guarantee you that uh, my reaction to this is, is, is the one uh, that, that, that is closer to what's really happening than, than, than the uh, market's reaction, which is to jump. Oh, there's now going to be 250,000 tons of demand for sure. And, and problems are over, there isn't enough production, so boy, everything's going to be just great. That is not what Dudley was saying, and it's not what I'm saying. Okay, great point. Thank you for your commentary and feedback. So let's ask, let's find out. Jack, are our problems over? Is the market turning around? I, I actually have, uh, because of, of my uh, involvement in the industry, uh, as a consultant and, and as now as a board member of a couple of companies, uh, I can tell you that I there is definitely a more sophisticated interest in the rare earth market uh, than there has been in the last, uh, shall we say, chaotic year. But the market has now learned, the, the institutional investors, and I hope small investors and I hope high net worth investors, I think that's the entire spectrum, they have now learned that it is not about how much you've got, what one of my uh, colleagues in this, in the pundit sector calls pounds in the ground. It's, that's not what it's about. It's, it's about our access to those pounds in the ground, which, which is not about shovels. It's about chemistry, 
process engineering and and boring subjects like programmable controllers for uh, chemical reactors. That's what it's about. If the chemists in their nice clean laboratories can come up with ways of extracting these these materials from the from where we find them at any level, whether it's 100% material or or 0.001. If they can do that economically, and then we can separate these things, then then you then you, the whole thing. Notice the word economic. If it's economical, it's practical. Otherwise, it's not. So when you show me a mountain of high grade material that's encased in in uh, in, uh, in you know silicate rock that cannot be uh, processed or even broken with less than a bomb, that's not a mine. That's just a curiosity. That brings me to the next question. I, I am kind of throwing you uh, on the uh, runway here today. Molly yeah. Corp just announced a new CEO, and of course they are actually processing Jack. There is some, I think, misinterpretation as well that you're not a fan of Molly Corp. Can you give our readers an update on your position on Molly Corp? Yeah, here's the thing. Um, I, I have no... Uh, first of all, I don't, I don't own any shares in Molly Corp. Uh, I've, I've been to the Mountain Pass plant, but that was in the spring of 2010 or 9. I, can't, I don't remember off the moment. And uh, I have I think Molly Corp's done a wonderful job. Now, having said that, uh, I think they've probably spent way too much money. And since you know, I don't like I don't like it when people call rarest commodities because they're, they're certainly not. Rarest are technology metals. They are not to be considered uh, something where uh, it, there are huge quantities of them around. They're all the same, and you know, you you buy wherever you like. You always buy the same thing. Uh, there are tiny quantities of rare earth metals uh, on the earth. There are even tinier quantities that we produce. Yes, they should be the the ferrodisprosium alloy you buy in Paris should be the same as the stuff you buy in Monongahela and Pensacola. That's true, but these are tiny specialized markets, and so if you spend a great deal of money bringing this stuff to market, you have to somehow be able to repay the money you invested. Uh, I personally think. Molly Corp has spent too much money and that that is their entire problem. Of course, they, they probably produce good stuff and they, they've always produced a lot of it. But can they produce it cheaply enough to sell against the fierce competition of the Chinese? I don't know. All right. So you're in New York City and you're speaking today. Can you tell us what you're there for and what, what message you're planning on discussing today with your audience? Well, actually, um, quite frankly, as always, the, the newspapers have rescued me today because, as I'm sure you know, Tracy, I rarely think about what I'm going to say until I'm saying it. Um, this morning's New York Times has an article in the science section uh, about the critical metals issue. And it is, although it's discussing uh, the America's uh, soon to be critical need for lithium 6 and helium. It, it does get into the point that this is all part of the rare the the issue that began to be publicized by the fact that we're no longer have a total supply chain for rare earths. And what intrigued me was that New York Times is quoting government officials, you know wherever they are, uh, that we must spend billions of dollars to re and ten years to restart the production of lithium six so we'll have enough tritium so we can I guess you know. Do something with, with nuclear reactors. Actually, it seems I think of tritium as a, a hydrogen bomb material, but it must be for something else. And uh, all that's. And I'm thinking to myself, six years ago, in Washington, I made the statement: developing an American, North American total rare earth supply chain will cost maybe a few hundred million dollars. Most of that for the mine. Well, you know, we've got, to, we've got to have a study. So these guys have appropriated $120 million to have a study. If they had actually given the $120 million to rare element resources, for example, uh, we, we'd be halfway to production. Uh, they're crazy. Okay, it is a problem. They don't know how to solve it except to talk to each other. And I noticed lately they're not even doing that. So what am I supposed to do? I'm just one guy. I'm just bringing this point out to institutional investors in New York that this is a real chance because you can get in on the cheap. This is the time 
to create a North American total wear earth supply chain industry, reignite our, our American production of rare earth permanent magnets. Uh, we are the world's leading source of, of fluid cracking catalyst. Why are we watching other guys take the, take this market away? Americans, North Americans, need to become oriented towards making profits, not giving money away, investing it. So that's that's what I'm talking about. Thank you very much. Good luck today, and we will talk to you in a couple of weeks.